Hello and welcome to the South West London and St George's Recovery College Home Learning Service. My name is Neil and I am one of the peer trainers with the college. In this video we will be taking a look at the topic of negative self-talk. Before we begin you may find it useful to have a pen and paper ready in case you would like to make any notes. In this video we will look at what we mean by negative self-talk take a look at a range of unhelpful thinking styles, understand the vicious cycle of negative thinking, and finally look at ways of breaking that cycle. Let's begin by looking at what we mean by self-talk. As we go through life, our minds never stop thinking. They are always analysing, considering, judging, commentating, and trying to work things out. Some people see images in their mind, while for others it's like talking to themselves internally. And for some people it's a mix of both. This is what we call self-talk. Although this process continues all the time we're awake, a lot of the time we're not aware of it. It's just happening in the background. But if we pay attention, there's always something going on. Negative self-talk is exactly that. Self-talk that has a negative bias. Although everyone will experience moments when their self-talk is negative or critical, people with good mental health, self-esteem and confidence will also experience many moments of positive or neutral self-talk, which help keep the things that happen in their lives in perspective. On the other hand, if you are stressed or anxious or your mood is low, your self-talk is much more likely to be negative, causing a loss of confidence and self-esteem, and you are less likely to acknowledge the positive things that happen in your life. Over time, this constant exposure to judgment and criticism can only have a negative effect on your mental health. You become more stressed and anxious, your mood drops further, and the self-talk becomes more negative and more difficult to ignore. There are many ways that you might experience negative self-talk. See if any of these ring a bell. People who lack confidence can spend a lot of time worrying about things that might happen in the future and predicting what might go wrong. You may blow things out of proportion or come to expect a catastrophe. For example, there's no point in going to the party because no one will talk to me or I'm going to have a panic attack. Or, what if I don't make friends when I start my new job? When people are feeling emotionally vulnerable, it is likely that they take things to heart and become more sensitive to what other people say. They can often make assumptions about why someone said or did something, being overly quick to draw conclusions and thinking that they are the focus of what has been said. For example, you think that your friend has ignored you, but in fact they have other things on their mind. Or, when I entered the room everyone was laughing, they must have been laughing at me. Often, people can ignore the positive aspects of their lives, focusing instead on the negatives. This style of thinking stops us feeling good about ourselves and can lower confidence. For example, despite having many friends, we focus only on the one person that doesn't seem to like us. Or we ignore praise and compliments and only hear the criticism. Sometimes people only see things as all or nothing, with nothing in between. Having this polarised view can lead them into setting themselves impossibly high standards, being overly critical and struggling to recognise any achievement due to their perfectionism. For example, despite having achieved a score of 98% in a test, all you can think about is how you failed to get 100%. Or, if it's not perfect, it's pointless. Based on one isolated incident, you might assume that other events will follow a similar pattern in the future. You might find it hard to see a negative event as a one-off, this can also mean that you label yourself, often unkindly, 
which can lower your mood and confidence, perhaps even leading to feelings of hopelessness. For example, Peter doesn't like me, therefore no one likes me. Or, I failed my driving test, I'm a failure, and I'll fail at everything. Negative thoughts are more likely when we are going through a stressful period, we are more preoccupied with things going on in our lives, or we are not looking after ourselves as well as we need to. But why do our negative thoughts sometimes seem to spiral out of control and get worse on their own, without any obvious cause? The reason our thoughts can seem to get worse on their own is because we can get trapped into a vicious cycle of negative thinking. The vicious cycle starts with a negative thought. The thought causes feelings and emotions. Because the thought was negative, the feelings and emotions are often difficult or challenging. The thoughts and feelings can then cause an automatic physical response. And because the physical response is unpleasant, our behaviour is likely to change to avoid similar situations in the future. For instance, you may be at work and feel overwhelmed and think to yourself, I can't cope with this. These thoughts make you feel anxious about what your co-workers might say or think, afraid of criticism from your manager and low because you feel that you are a failure. The increased stress and anxiety might make you feel permanently tense or cause dizzy spells or cramps. To try and reduce these feelings, you may then start avoiding people and situations that make you feel uncomfortable, which might lead you to taking time off work, which will make you feel guilty, and isolating from everyone. All of this will simply confirm and reinforce your original thought, I can't cope, and so the cycle continues. It is possible to break this cycle, although it does require some effort. First of all, it is important to notice and then challenge negative self-talk. When you notice your inner voice say, I can't cope, pause and challenge that thought. You might think about the things in your life that you are coping with. Or perhaps you might say to yourself, if I break things down, I can cope with each part individually. Or even, they have given me more work than any one person could do. I will speak to my manager and ask for help. This will help reduce stress and anxiety to some extent. But it is also important to find other ways to relax your mind and body, such as meditation or a breathing exercise, or a few minutes of regular exercise. Feeling both mentally and physically calmer will then reduce your tendency to avoid or isolate. And if you'll notice yourself falling into unwanted behaviours, you can check into your self-talk and see if there is anything going on. Finally, because you have not taken the negative self-talk on board, you are less likely to have or listen to the inner voice telling you that you can't cope. I mentioned that in order to break the cycle of negative self-talk, first you must notice your self-talk. Being aware of your thoughts and feelings as they happen is an important part of taking control of your mental health. This is, of course, much more easily said than done, but with practice it does become a lot easier. Mindfulness can be a great help in this. Although there are many aspects to mindfulness, one of the most basic principles is awareness of your thoughts in the moment. Although noticing negative self-talk as it happens is an important first step, it is just as important to then challenge those negative thoughts. Rather than simply believing them just because it was you that said it, ask for evidence and examples. Look for alternative explanations and generally treat these thoughts with scepticism. When we talk about challenging our thoughts, many people think of cognitive behavioural therapy or CBT. If you have had CBT, you can apply these techniques to your negative self-talk. And if you are interested in CBT, then please speak to your mental health professional. However, it is not necessary to do a course in CBT to challenge your thoughts. And then, 
be kind to yourself. Self-compassion is something that people who struggle with negative self-talk are often lacking. It can seem odd because these people rarely lack in compassion for others. They just seem to hold themselves to much higher standards than they do other people. If you notice that you are being hard on yourself for some perceived shortcoming, ask yourself, would I treat a close friend who is in the same situation like this? The answer is almost certainly no, you wouldn't. So how would you treat them? What would you say to them? Is there anything you might do to help them feel better? And, most importantly, why don't you deserve to be treated in the same way? Although not particularly common, courses in self-compassion are available. If you are interested, you can find out more information about cognitive behavioural therapy on the nhs.uk website. You can also find applications for challenging your thoughts in the NHS Apps Library. Take a look, give them a try, see if one works for you. The links to both of these sites are on the screen. Pause if you would like to take time to write them down. We have now come to the end of this video. Please take the time to watch it again if you feel you need to. And if you have any questions about the video or would like to discuss any of the content on the phone with one of our trainers, please don't hesitate to give us a call. The number to call is on the screen. I hope you have found this video useful. Keep an eye out for new videos and courses on our website and keep learning about your mental health.